Oh, they brighten up really nice. Well, it's been my frustration all spring. Like I say, conditions can and do change quickly. Well, I think in this case is as Mother Nature's mad at me for calling her bipolar. But anyways, just as I shot this fishing report and I was about ready to post it, in fact I was going to edit it right now, um, over the night the river went from 285 to 750 plus some runoff. So like I say, conditions can and do change quickly. All I'm going to, instead of kind of waiting two days to post a whole new video and everything else, because I'm quite sure everybody would like to know what's going on, what I am going to tell you is I think pretty much everything's going to stay the same. We just have more water. And obviously I think also water temperatures are going to improve a little bit um, o over the uh, next couple of days after this. And then, of course, it's going to be a little bit goofy for a day or two. The fish are going to acclimate. Then I think temperatures will improve and we'll have some pretty decent um, spring drop back fishing. But anyways, water's up. Like I said, conditions can and do change quickly. Anyways, here's the fishing report. Enjoy. Okay, I'm way overdue for a fishing report. But I think this is going to be more than just a fish report, more of a commiseration slash report and what's up. Because Mother Nature and the steelhead fishing has been really bipolar lately. Well, before I get commiserating, um, let's get some um, uh, some of the announcements out of the way. One is I, we're, I'm obviously on the Salmon River doing that part of the cycle with the, with the steelhead fishing. I have time open in May. Normally we call May swing season for steelhead fishing. Uh, I got a lot of time open for that, um, but what I would suggest if you're interested, give me a call, talk to me, and I'll tell you what's up and what the options are. Um, it might be a kind of a game day decision on if the steelhead fishing is going to be practical or not in May. Um, but there's lots open and usually traditionally that's been some great steelhead fishing, some wonderful swing, fishing with a spay rod, swinging flies, working with sink tips, even if the, especially if the river gets low, like 185. So don't let water depths, if you are interested in doing that, call, talk to me and we'll do about that. So that's what's going on with steelhead fishing. That's for May, um, coming up in a few weeks, or a couple, two weeks, three weeks, well, two weeks. We're about middle of May right now, two and a half weeks. But anyways, I digress. Um, also in May, it's pike time. We're going to be starting our toothy critter fishing program. We have lots of slots open for that, so if you're interested in with that, um, that's a great opportunity. If you're a musky fisherman, you want to tune up your musky fishing skills, you know, come pike fish with us. Our pike, they're not 40 inch monsters that often, even though we get a few, but it's a great time to tune up because we do, generally speaking, get a lot of bites in the course of a session. So we got the pike thing going. Also, um, it's trout season. We're back, we're trout fishing. Um, the hatches will be starting on my local trout streams where I fish just south of Rochester. We have a classic spring creek there if you want to do some spring creek fishing. If you struggled with your midge fishing, your midge game, your small fly game, um, we can do work with you. We'll be having sulfurs coming up. The owls are start owls are starting to hatch. We'll have the caddis hatches on our freestone water, our olives on our spring creek, and then eventually later in the month in our sulfur. So there'll be a lot of trout fishing bail going on, a lot of some really unique um, trout fishing opportunities. And our water's kind of small, so it's a very intimate, nice, comfortable trout stream. They're not overwhelmingly big. And for the most part, we can stay out of a lot of fishing pressure, like some of the more named creeks. So if you like a quiet, intimate experience, trout fishing, we can provide that for you. So that's kind of what's going on um, with the pike swing thing. You, I want to check. Obviously, we got trout fishing and pike fishing available. So just um, let us know what you're interested in. Give us a call. We can talk about your, your options. The other um, announcement is, is we are still taking names and putting together an email list for the people that are interested in our um, last weekend of August um, spay clinic. So if you're interested in that, get in contact with us. Let's get you on the, um, the mailing email list. So we'll probably start filling that up in June. In July we'll start taking confirmations on that. So just get on the list if you're interested. Well, let's get to the 
my fish report and commiseration. As I said, Mother Nature has been very bipolar, so is the steelhead fishing. It seems like each time I sit down to do a fishing report, the conditions change. And it's like, all right, I just did this report, delete, it's no good anymore, scrap it. And on I go. Plus I've been very busy, so it's kind of hard to get, get them out. But I finally got a chance to do one. The conditions are probably going to change very quickly anyway, so bear that in mind. So we are in the middle of April, and everything is running a couple of weeks at least ahead of schedule. Normally by mid-April is when I'm leaving the western New York um, Oak Orchard's watershed area and coming to the Sam River. I'm just starting here, and we're dealing with high water, spring runoff. Um, basically our water flow is 285, 285 right now. And about two weeks ago, the, our wonderful utility company um, decided to take us from 1,200 CFS to 285 CFS in about 24 hours. And that really mucked things up for, for quite a while. It took a while for the fish to acclimate. The other problem is, is we would have almost hot weather, like mid-70s, hot for this time of year for a day or two. And then the weather would shift and it would snow and then pour rain wind would blow literally 60 miles off we've had three windstorms since i've been up here i mean I like to knock the trees down and take power out in areas windstorms and then um recently in the last three days just recently it's been cold windy rainy um we've gotten about an inch of rain in the last i don't know 72 hours but unfortunately all the rain that we just had is going to be nothing but maintenance to fill the reservoir back up my feeling is it's going to stay at 285, maybe 335. If we're lucky, we'll see some 500. Um, so that could be an issue for a little bit. Also, the water temperatures were getting into the low 50s, which was great for swing fishing because you get drop back steelhead, they get into that 50 degrees, they start recovering from that spawn, they get hungry. And they'll start chasing that fly across the pool. Well, when the water drops back down into the mid 40s, like places, um, yeah, that kind of puts the fish into a thermal shock, so that kind of got a funk. But the spawning is over, so we are in full drop back. Um, there is fish in the upper fly zones, the fly zones scattered down to the DSR, but I'll get on that in a minute. So that's been kind of what's been going on. Water temperatures drop, water temperatures are up and down, water flows have dropped, but water flows have dropped, temperatures have been up and down. So it's been really not stable. That kind of really messes the fish up. So that's part of what's the, the issue here. So let's kind of go on about what I've been doing and what I've been observing. So there is a tiny bit of spawning still left going on like in the upper fly zone and that's been, and maybe a few odd spots up and down the river, but that's been about it. For the most part, it's been the fish are in full eat and drop back mode. We got fish in the fly zones up there. It's yeah, they're they're kind of they're crabby. Uh, mostly what we've been using up there is fishing on indicators with egg patterns. Yeah, maybe some egg patterns. I haven't done well with that in a while. But more like nymphs, stone flies, little wet flies, small buggers. That's been working. And then like lower fly zone in there, um, I've been doing pretty decent under indicators with, with nymphs. So it's upper river is kind of a niffing game. As you go down river, and the more time those fish are off the spawning habitat and into the other river, the further away they get, although it's more time they've had when they finish spawning, they the more they get, they, re, they heal up, they lose that dark spawning color, they start to get their appetite and they start aggressively feeding. So the further down they get, it gets better. So probably right now, um, what we've been doing is breaking out the two-handed rods, the spay rods, doing depth control with the sink tips, and just swinging flies and covering water. That's been probably, our, that's the game now. And the more water we cover, the more bites we get. So our most effective presentation is swinging flies with a spay rod. A lot of what we've been doing is, you probably wouldn't surprise anybody that follows my channel and everything else that knows, Steely crack is getting it done. And then I've also some other little tube flies, some um, little olive, olive stuff. Even this version in olive has been working. And a couple other real fun um, tube flies and little mini intruders is really what we're using right now. And it's all control, um, depth control. 
The nice thing about the 285 water is one is we don't have to chuck such heavy aggressive tips. It makes the casting a little easier, a little bit more fun. And what it also does is it takes all those fish that could be a little bit of fish behavior here. So when they're done and they're looking for food, if let's say we have 750, which is a nice float, water to float, and it's often a normal flow for this time of year. Those fish can be anywhere. They can be under the boat, they can be in the gut of the pool, they can be in the tailouts, they can be in the frog water where we normally ignore. They can be in that, that real soft frog water hunting baby chinooks and they're about yay big right now um, to crabs and any, creek chubs and helgramites, anything in there. So they can be in there actually hunting and looking for food. So when you get that water gets down into let's say where we are now at 285 those fish, that habitat goes away and those fish have a tendency to concentrate more into deeper runs and pools. And also since it's, the rest of the water is a little shallow, they get a little nervous getting out of there and have a tendency to stay there longer. So that lower water, in my opinion, holds them a little bit better, concentrates them into bigger tanks, and actually makes it easier for us to find them and present a fly to them. And they generally have a tendency to linger in there a little longer. So that's kind of what's going on. So we're taking advantage of that and just fishing through a lot of those deeper runs and pools, covering as much water as we can, and utilizing the um, the swing and the spay rods, the swing technique and the spay rods is a technique to cover a lot of water and get our bites. So that's kind of what's going on. And we're fine, we're basically doing that from you know, all the way down the river and right down through um, the Douglas and Salmon Run there too and like I say when you fish the Douglas and Salmon Run you don't want to stay in one spot you need to cover water. Well now that rule goes all up and down the river. You know, from the top of the river down to the bottom. So right through the Douglaston. Also down at the bottom end to the Douglaston there's been some reports of some of the smallmouth starting to show up which doesn't surprise me. Uh, quick note it is legal on this river in this area to fish for smallmouth when the season's closed but it's a catch and release only um, fisheries. So if you do target them, keep in mind it's a catch and release and a little tip is, is stay in the main pools because using that side water so they're spawning but in the centers they're not quite there yet and get the fish back quick. But anyways, you know, get a quick little really cool picture. They're awesome this time because they can be big. Some of those fish are pushing five pounds and just get them back on their way. But anyways, that's kind of what's going on. Um, you know, we're just swing flies, running the cool stuff, covering a lot of water and just dealing with mother nature as she just keeps changing the weather on us. Like so one day it'll be 70 degrees and the next day it's 35. A nice sunny calm day and did 70 and 35 and blowing 60. So that's really what's been going on. Um, also one final note, a lot of you people have stopped and said hello that watched the channel. Thank you for saying hello, it's good to meet you. And as always, um, Sienna River, good fishing folks, and hope this was useful. This is Jay at JPEC Guides and Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our outings or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at lostriversfishing.com. Hope to hear from you, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.